We are now joined by Lori Wendolf Crispo, Senior Executive Vice President, Bollinger Insurance. Good to see you. Good to see you, Steve. Now, why do we have someone on from Bollinger and we're talking about sports safety and youth, you know, activities involved in sports? What, what are you doing here? Well, I do a lot with sports safety because I work with sports organizations all across the country, but a lot in New Jersey, and uh, and we work with them to try to set up safety plans and and work out some risk management techni techniques and you know, insurance buzzwords and things like that, but to try to make their program safer. And what I realize is there's a, there's a disconnect when I get out on the field with my kids. Uh, How old are your kids? They're 9 and 12. And, what are they involved in? Uh, they're involved in soccer, fencing, basketball. Are those your kids or just some those are my picture kids. of some really cute kids those that are my we bought kids that somewhere? I, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so it's soccer and? Uh, basketball and a little lacrosse and oh, great. fencing. And, um, you know, I get out on the field with parents and the lightning's coming and they don't, they don't think twice to stop the game. People, don't, people on the field don't understand that, that safety carries down. And um, we're doing a lot at the top, but it's not trickling down to the bottom. And Bollinger has been around since 19, 1930s? 1930s. Is it true that your grandfather started this place? My grandfather and his brother did. And, uh, and sports safety has been kind of a legacy for us uh, going back to the 30s and 40s. Um, my grandfather worked with the New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association. They regulate all sports. One of our oldest clients, and um, and we've been working with students and student athletes ever since. What's the what are the biggest risks to athletes, kids involved in sports? What kind of injuries are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about. I think what the main thing we're talking about is that in youth sports, from from our perspective, uh, ninety percent of of sports injuries I think can be prevented. And Give us a for instance. Parents don't realize that. Uh, lightning, like we just talked about. Heat stroke, 100% preventable. Uh, coaches just need to take a little time and uh, make sure their players cool down in, in hot weather, especially sports with helmets. Uh, very key. To give me, uh, I'll give you a time out. Sure. It's August. It's August. Uh, I was going to say, it's August 1975. Boy, am I dating myself. <laughs> I'm, a, uh, I'm in high school. And... I'm playing for Essex Catholic High School in mm -hmm. Branchbrook Park, New Jersey. We have what we call double sessions. You know what double right. sessions are? Todd, you know what double sessions are? Sure <laughs> First session was from 10 to 12. Right. Let me go back after that. By the way, both in full. Full gear. Stinky, rotten, smelly uniforms, helmets, everything. Mm -hmm. It's 90 degrees. And the water's sitting there. And the water's. And you don't get the water until you do certain things. Right. And I saw kids throwing up, mm -hmm. dropping down, all, just dropping right out there exactly. on the field. And the coach is like, this is making you tough. Mm -hmm. And you know who you are, coaches, if you're watching. Right. What was wrong with that? Well, it's not making them tough. It's making them very ill. And, uh, and like I said, cooling the kids down and keeping them, keeping them hydrated. You know, Gatorade wasn't invented yet in 75. No. But uh, keeping them well hydrated is, is really key to preventing heat stroke. And it can be fatal. So you want to make sure that, that you do what's necessary. Heat stroke, lightning. What else? Uh, not wearing the proper safety equipment. Uh, we have injuries, for example, um, kids playing lacrosse. The coach is watching the kids out on the field. The boys are hacking around on the sidelines without their helmet on, and a ball hits them right in the eye, and they lose an eye. Uh, things like that. Not wearing mouth guards. Uh, mouth guards not only protect your teeth, but they help you, uh, you know, stave off the concussion sure. or the effects of concussion. So, um, so those things are really important. And, and, you know, kids are lax about it. Parents, you know, you're juggling so many things. You know, I work full time. I and try to get my kids to the car. Yeah, but I'm trusting my coach with that exactly. kid. I'm trusting my kid with that coach, right? Exactly. What's potentially wrong with that? Well, there, there's only one pair of eyes out on the field. They can't often watch uh, 50 kids. <laughs> well, Laura, you've also told our producers it's another issue. Yes. And there's another kind of injury that could occur. Mm -hmm. Could be physical, could be emotional and psychological. Yes. You've talked about the potential problem of sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. Why? What are we talking about here? We are talking about uh, sexual abuse coming up in, in sort of three different ways. I think people think about sexual abuse in sports, and they're thinking uh, sexual predators and yes. molesters, the number one thing. And, and that can happen. Um, but number two, you know, hazing is still a big thing in sports. Um, Alfred University just did a study. A million and a half high school students, 48% um, of them said that they have been involved in hazing incidents. What does that have to do with a coach? What does that have to do with the coach? The coach isn't setting the appropriate guidelines and not monitoring these kids enough to say that hazing has no place in our no program. No excuse for hazing. No it has excuse. no place. Absolutely. Nothing fun about it. No, no process of, this is the way we include you. Come right. on, we've done it for years. For years, unfortunately. And, you know, a lot of times those incidents involve alcohol, and next thing you know there's physical abuse, sometimes sexual abuse, and that, that's just a downward spiral. And Bollinger is doing what about this? 
We're doing, well, we're doing a lot of awareness. Um, in particular, uh, in the third, the third part of um, sexual abuse that we're seeing is uh, these sort of, what you could say are consensual relationships between coaches and, and high school students. How could it be you consensual know? if the kid's it's 16? It's not consensual. That's the thing. It's, uh, you know, a coach having maybe a midlife crisis of some kind, and maybe they're infatuated with a 15-, 16-year-old girl, and we're seeing more and more cases like this. And so what we're doing is trying to uh, talk to people like you or, right. or make, um, you know, make people aware through our website or through... Uh, What's your website? Bowlingerinsurance.com. Go Put to, it up there, guys. Go to Consumer Tips. Consumer Tips, right? Consumer Tips. What about the blog? The blog, I have a blog called uh, sportssafetyiq.com. I love that. I, we and, looked at uh, this, Sports Safety IQ. Tell folks what happens when they uh, log on to it. They log on to it. I have a lot of uh, different topics, for, for example, on, on uh, coaches as predators and things like that. Uh, issues about um, MRSA staph infections, the big superbug you're hearing about. Um, steroids, of course, the big topic. Big, isn't it? Big. Is ugly. It, is it ugly. Mm -hmm. What's the message you want to share today about it? I know the story will continue. What's the message the story, you have from Bollinger? Well, you know, like, like you were saying earlier, uh, it's, it's spiraling out of control. The, this hyper-competitiveness in sports right now is, is uh, causing parents to push their kids in too many di directions that are bad. And, uh, and, and it even trickles down back into the abuse category because they're pushing their kids so much in these elite programs, um, whether they're getting there through the use of steroids or they're uh, just putting them out there with these coaches. Um, the kids are, are, you know, betting their life, their future on what these coaches say, and it puts them in a precarious position. They can be uh, led astray because they feel they have to. Before I let you out here, Larry, you know, we talked on the phone um, after I met you. I mm -hmm. gave a speech up at Bollinger, and I right. saw how passionate you were about this. You are. Your greatest passion for this comes from? comes from, well, I'm a mom, and, uh, you know, I want to be in denial about all these things, just like a lot of people. You want to put your head in the sand and yep. not... Not, you want to think of sports as, you know, apple pie and mom, um, but it's not. And uh, because of, you know, what I do at my day job, um, you know, I see the, the ugly things that come across my desk, and I, I wish parents were, were as aware of them as they could be. Well, they're more aware because you were here. Well, thanks. And the passion comes from being a parent in that spirit, and I want to thank Lori for being here. We come back after this break. We're going to switch things up a little bit, a little bit of a surprise. We're looking for a parent who's got kids involved in sports who is struggling and trying to make sense of it and all we came up with was me which means someone else is going to have to sit in this seat and interview me and you're going to have to stay tuned to find out who it is stay with us this is one-on-one -on -one. youth sports we'll be right back